Okay. Uh, Jim Howard here in Fort Worth, Texas. Today's date, it is uh, February 28th of, it's a Friday of uh, 2020. Uh, tomorrow, there will be a February uh, the 29th. This is a leap year. So what's been going on? I've hooked back up uh, yesterday my um, Chrome box, played with it again, then just disconnected. I really need a hub so I don't have to uh, get down on the floor and hook these cables and stuff back, back up. I need a hub so I can just have the hub up here and be a matter of... But uh, so then when I went back to... Um, Linux from the Chrome uh, had audio problems again. Actually, I think the audio is pretty good now. I went into OBS and I found another place to make uh, some ch changes to the audio. So I think, oh, and I also went back to this, which I've been using for years, the USB headset instead of the 3.5. So I think that's good. But then. <laughs> Uh, I, well, it's just, a temp I just didn't want to mess with it, so, uh, the video then was not showing up here, so I just decided not worry about the video inset in the thing and just to, uh, fire up the Cream app, so, which is, uh, actually, I sort of like it this way gives me the option for this easier. I know if you're an OBS fan, you're saying, hey, Jim, yes, you can do this and that, whatever. As you can see, I have my big bag of potato chips here. God, I don't want to see myself large. Um, we ordered in from, had food delivered from, I'm looking at the wrong mic, or at the wrong camera um, we ordered in food from Walmart had it delivered we've been really happy with the uh, we also you know we don't have a car uh, uh, sometimes my ex-wife and son grown son they go at, to Walmart and then sometimes we just order and have it delivered so we had about $180 worth of uh, food delivered. I'm not going to show you the, I'm looking at the wrong camera again. I'm not going to show you the food list because then those of you who are smart and healthy are going to be saying, oh no, you don't have anything there that's healthy. We ordered in a couple uh, two liter bottles of Coke Zero. And uh, first time we've, gone, you know, we like we ordered five 24-packs of Coke Zero, but we ordered a couple, uh, two liter of Pepsi Zero. So I tried it for the first time, tasted it a little bit different, you know, different than Coke. And uh, I sort of like the taste. It tasted a little sweeter. I think I'm going to stick with Coke, but uh, my ex-wife and my uh, my son, they both like to Coke Pepsi. They might be happy with it, so I don't know. Uh, what else? Here, I guess in a few hours, I'll be getting, for the first time in three months, uh, a commission from Amazon, uh, $40, <laughs> three months, and, it, and I finally got $40. That's if you click on a link, uh, or if you go to the link like jimhoward.me. Let me show you that again. You know, uh, if, if you just do this, jimhoward.me. There you go. 
Now, you don't have to purchase anything that's on this page or this list. Uh, I need to go in there and update, you know, look at that stuff again and update it or whatever. But if you just do that and you purchase, you then you come here and uh, find something else or you come to buy something, I will get a commission. I forget what it is. One point, I'm not sure if it's always the same, 1.6% or whatever. So, uh, uh, oh, yeah. If you tell it it's okay, Walmart will make substitutions. And every time they've made a substitution, like uh, I think we ordered six bags of potato chips that were like 8.5 or something ounces. And uh, or did we order three? Maybe we ordered, I can't remember, but what they do is they uh, substituted, you know, up almost double the size, 15.2 ounces, and they gave us, uh, you know, it didn't cost us, you know, you know, we were paying for, and they've done that in other, other regards. Now, the only thing is, if there's a, uh, like cat food. We order cat food and uh, my ex-wife does the ordering. You know, she clicks do not substitute cat food because our cat food is picky. Only wants a certain kind and if you get the other kind not even going to uh, look at it. Um, wonder what, let's see, these, how many images here. I sure love taking pictures of myself, don't I? I've got a bunch of uh, old, really should be careful, shouldn't I, about who knows what's going to show up here. Um, I've got a bunch of old family photos, and I've got my printer hooked up here that does scanning. So you're probably going to be seeing some old pictures that I will probably scan. Got a whole bunch. And they're in different locations, you know. And they're they're going to degrade. They they are degrading. Uh, this is me, by the way, when I was in high school. You can't tell, but I'm reading S W L, a uh, short wave short wave publication that I put out for years. And this was taken February of 1960. Okay, I would have been out of high school. I graduated from high school. Okay. And uh, I love this picture. If you've seen my Facebook page, uh, at Christmas a lot of times you'll see this picture. This is our oldest, LaDonna. And the one crying is Hillary, the next in line. <laughs> I just love that picture, and I've I post that quite a. I don't think I have actually posted in a uh, while. This is uh, I was born 1941. This picture is from California during World War II. It was December 29th of 1942, at the park. That's my mother. And I'm going to you know I'll scan that and. Getting reflection off this, aren't I? You know, I think maybe, I know what I should do. Let's do this, and let's go do this. Still getting that, uh, well, that's off my monitor, isn't it? That doesn't look. Some of these pictures have squirrels in them. This is 1952. I'm on the, let's see, the right. I'm over, well, right away. Wait a minute. No, that's not me. 
This this is me up here. Yeah. And in the middle there is Janet, one of my cousins, and her brother, uh, Billy Stallsworth, a, a year younger. That's from uh, 1952. Uh Billy Stallsworth was really about my the only cousin that I I had like 60 <laughs> first cousins. Uh, he was a year younger than I was. Uh, uh, he, uh, you know, my other cousins, all of them hung out together and went to school together and all that type of stuff. But Billy was my uh, mother's brother's son and uh, we I mean we didn't hang out you know but once a year a couple times a year might see each other uh, he ended up uh, when he was maybe I'm not sure I, I'm not sure on the dates but uh, he uh, ended up going to well they moved to, his family moved to Muskuski, uh, wherever, Oklahoma, Musco I can't remember, you know. Anyway, uh, he ended up being, uh, the story is that he was in a bar in Dallas with a friend of his and that they got into an argument and they went outside and started fighting and then they his friend pulled out a gun and shot and killed him. This is uh, no date on this. This is uh, my father and I in a backyard at 3510 Garfield, Kansas City, Missouri. And he, my father had a bunch of gravel delivered and uh, we were uh, spreading it out in, in the backyard or whatever. This is my father and I. Picture's kind of messed up, I think. No, I guess not what's tore, but that's my father and I in California. I'm the one with the uh, sailor outfit on. Back then, men wore hats and wore, you know, wore suits. This is... Uh, Picture was taken in 1947. It's my mother, and she's when I was uh, in kindergarten, and we spent that one year or a few months or whatever, you know, my parents, and I was in kindergarten, and uh, that was our landlady. She was a seamstress, and my mother. Well, my mother kept in contact by phone with with everybody. So they were like best buddies, but my mother was always calling when well, my mother was drinking all the time. And my mother worked every day, never missed a day's work, but had come home and drink and call, start with A in the phone book and call. So this was Mrs. Hannah, so that'd be H. Yeah, she'd still get, but uh, she's the only person that I know of that I ever heard of, really. She died of uh, lockjaw. She was uh, raising worms got a cut or something on her hand and died of lockjaw. If you go into the emergency room at a hospital or to a doctor's office and you have a, uh, a cut or something, you know, or even if you're working and, well, maybe everybody should have the lockjaw shot, but especially if you're working, if you're a working man, I mean, you could be a woman too, you know, doing some, you know, where you might get cut or, dealing with rusty metal or something like that you should have. But anyway, they'll ask you, you know, have you had your uh, tetanus shot? And I'm sure a lot of people think, you know, uh, why do I need a tetanus shot? Well, you know, this is a wedding picture. That's... Uh, that's our cake or whatever. I'm the skinny guy in the back. That's Darlene in the front. 
I was 26, she was 18. Uh, we were married for 12 years. Uh, here's another wedding picture. That's my father and mother, and that's me and Darlene again. Here I am reading the SWL, that shortwave publication that I put out. I also did a radio program that was broadcast over shortwave radio to Europe, Africa, and Latin America. This is uh, Barnwell, South Carolina. 1952, my father was down there working on the H-bomb plant, building an H-bomb plant, you know, not by himself. Picture says uh, Aikens, South Carolina, but it does uh, Barnwell, South Carolina. Anyway, those are government trailers. It was 1952. So that was, that was in uh, racist times. Um, so I got to see for, for an entire summer I got to see the south and uh, here are some of my father's sisters well though that this is all okay this is all three of my father's sisters and the older lady there is uh, his mother. My father's sisters were, you know, my aunts, they were really, all of them were really nice women. And here is my father's family. There again, uh, the older lady is his mother. And then uh, I see two of his sisters, and then that's one of his brothers. So I have a whole bunch more pictures. I don't even know why I started. That was, I had no intention of uh, starting to do that, but, oops, let's see. There we go. So what's the news today? It's, uh... I hope I, I hope I do not get this virus, you know, when it, if it, you know, I hope that Trump is right, that a miracle is going to make it disappear, or that it's not going to be bad, or whatever, because I just don't think I could survive the regular flu, you know, and uh, I know Trump, Trump never, says anything that's honest but I had I really hadn't been, been paying attention I had thought the other day when he made his talk telling us how he was going to save the stock market there was supposed to be a stock a, a talk on what the government was going to do about this uh, virus but it was a talk about how he was going to save the stock market I think but uh, he said that the death rate was the same from the flu as from this new virus. And I thought, I thought, yeah, that's correct. He finally said something that's right. Turns out after he got off the air, no, the, uh, the flu that comes through every year, the death rate from that is 0.1. And right now it looks like the death rate from this new virus is 2% or 2.5%. And it's so new, we're not really, you know, apparently they're not really sure. I don't think this entire thing is going to be handled well at all, and especially since uh, Vice President Pence has been put in charge of it. It's uh, because uh, he didn't think, and I guess maybe still he doesn't think that 
lung cancer is caused by smoking. He doesn't think smoking kills you, I guess. Then he was governor of New Hampshire, and the reason he was no longer governor of New Hampshire was he, uh, they had a problem with HIV, and uh, because of his religion and because of his stupidity, although I don't think he's, well, yeah, I guess if you don't think that smoking causes cancer and some of the other stuff, you know, but I guess you are stupid, but... Um, he handled the situation with HIV. He didn't take any steps to, I mean, it was really bad in the state for some reason. And it was because of needle exchange, or needles weren't, you know, drug addicts were uh, using the same needles and stuff like that. And so the situation got worse, progressively worse, and he did absolutely nothing. And the people of the state of New Hampshire said, so long to him. We never want to see you again, and we don't want to. We don't want you into politics or get lost, and you're never. And political pundits and people, you know, Republicans in the party and everything. Like when they looked at him, it was like, you know, that's that's a loser. You know, they were saying to him, you know, we're not saying to him, but you know, he's well. That's the end of him. He's a loser. And then who comes along but Donald Trump looking for somebody special? He picks him. And then we have this, which may be a catastrophe, it could be, this virus. And uh, who does Trump put in charge? Vice President Pence. Like I said, I... I hope I don't get this virus because, or any flu or anything. I got, last few years I've been getting the flu shot because I just don't feel, you know, I'm, I just don't feel like I could take a serious illness. Let's see, what's the news? Uh, Tay and hospitals are overcrowded. State Department raises travel advisory for Italy. Uh, doctor says mask won't help. Well, it couldn't hurt. You know, the number one thing is hand washing. I mean hand washing. Believe me. Uh, years ago when my grandson was living with, he was grown, but he was living with me, you know, and, flu came through or something and I told him you know and he laughed you know I said no I'm serious that's the number one thing wash your hands you know and of course not sneeze on people or let people sneeze on you or <clears throat> saw a doctor on uh, CNN or something I think I can't remember where and she said she wasn't shaking hands with people anymore you know that's really I think that's really a good idea. That might have just, you know, I think maybe that should just happen that uh, no disrespect to somebody, but it ought to be, no, we don't shake hands. You know, that probably ought to be the uh, the new thing, even if you're making a big business deal or whatever. Just do like the uh, Japanese do, you know, have a business card and have a certain way of holding it, and you hand it to somebody with two fingers, you know. And, uh, of course, the only thing they'd, you know, be touching it, but I don't know. I'm not sure what the solution to, uh, Chinese warship fired a military laser at a U.S. aircraft. Uh, this is a bad deal here. Uh, a court just ruled, you know, the, uh, Congress uh, wanted somebody to testify before Congress, and the White House uh, refuses to uh, let people testify, which, I mean, that's, that's what happened. It's that's what's always happened. That's the way the system was set up, that 
you know, Congress would could hold uh, hearings and uh, ask people to testify, and people would come in and testify from the anywhere, you know. And if if necessary, then the uh, Congress could issue a uh, subpoena, you know, to ordering them to appear before Congress. And Trump and his administration, for the first time, it's like. No, nobody's going to talk to Congress. We're not giving you any information, and fuck you. And so it went to a, not to Supreme Court, but it went to a federal appear, uh, appeals court Friday. A federal appear, uh, appeals court Friday severely limited Congress's ability to enforce subpoenas it sends to the executive branch. In a decision dismissing the U.S. House of Representatives' lawsuit to former White House counsel Don McGrath to testify, in a two-to-one decision, the U.S. Court of Appeals for the District of Columbia ruled it didn't have the constitutional authority to resolve the standoff between the House Judicial Committee, Committee and the White House. It said, quote, we cannot decide this case without declaring the actions of one of the other branches unconstitutional, unquote. And then down, if the federal courts were to swoop in to rescue Congress whenever its constitutional f- tools failed, it would not just supplement the, it would not just supplement the political process, it would replace the process with one in which unelected judges become the uh, perpetual overseers of our elected officials. Blah, 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 blah. And that is, that's, uh, that's just, <laughs> that's what the court is supposed to do, decide these cases. Now what you could have, I don't think it's going to get to this point, but Congress has the authority, you know, to subpoena people and to order them to appear. And what Congress can do, which I very rarely and maybe almost never, what they can do, and it's constitutional and lawful for them to do it, what they could do is, now, with this guy, he was the the president, he was the White House counsel, or, so I'm not sure exactly, you know, that might be one person that that uh, maybe, I don't know, maybe that's a person who shouldn't be out of, but the, Trump wouldn't allow anybody to testify, you know, nobody. And he said, you know, fuck you to Congress. And if you're in the, well, even if you're in the United States, you might have to be told, my God. But if you're from someplace else in the world, we have three separate, you know, we have a republic, a constitutional, a democratic constitutional republic with three branches of government that are equal. You have the executive branch headed by the President of the United States. You have the judicial, the House, the Senate, you have Congress, the Senate and the House. You have the judicial headed by the United States Supreme Court and all of the other courts. They are all equal. President Trump is not supreme over the Speaker of the House or the uh, leader of the, you know, the Senate. That is a separate, you know. So, anyway, the Congress of the United States can, you know, can, they would have to, the committee would have to, they have procedures, you know. A committee would have to say, "Hey, you know, we're going, we're going to subpoena a uh, subpoena. <laughs> we're going to subpoena uh, this person," and then it would have to go to, the, you know, the uh, the the floor of the house. Let's say the house. Let's say it's the house is doing it, and the house would have to vote yes, issue this subpoena, and then the subpoena, you know, is issued. Now, in that case, let's say the president, which Trump has been doing, let's say the president says, oh, fuck you. What are you going to do about it? The, the, the Congress can instruct the, uh, 
uh, not the, the uh, what do they call him, sergeant of arms or what, whatever, is that it? Anyway, it can instruct him to go out and take in, uh, you know, to arrest and bring him, this person, to the uh, to Congress, and if necessary, lock him up in you know at uh, Congress, take him into custody, put handcuff, and the uh, Congress has uh, their own police department, the Capitol Police or whatever. And uh, now, can you so you know the these judges here are saying, well, we can't interfere in something like you know like that, so. What would the then? What's the alternative going to be if the if Congress has to, you know, send a sergeant of arms with police officers to arrest a member of the uh, president's staff who works at the White House? I wouldn't suggest they go try to take him into custody at the White House. Maybe the president would want to put him up in a room in the Lincoln, you know, bedroom, <laughs> you know, so he didn't have to go home and be arrested there or whatever. But so, I mean, what are you going to have? You're going to have the Congress of the United States, a equal segment of the government. You're going to have them go, you know, <coughs> with the, uh, I'm not sure it is <coughs> the Capitol Police. The Capitol Police may be, yeah, I think the Capitol Police are the ones. I mean, God, I mean, they have so many law enforcement agencies, yeah, but anyway, I think it is the Capitol Police that is for the Capitol, you know. Um, but, I mean, what are you going to have them going to the White House with a order, you know, wouldn't be a court order, which normally is what you have, you know, a arrest warrant is, a, you know, an order from a judge saying that I'm taking you into custody or whatever. In fact, telling, in that case, it's a order issued by a judge that, judge that all law enforcement officers are supposed to respect. But in this case, you'd have it, you know, Congress would come and say, well, you know, we have a, a warrant to, uh, you know, take, and then you're going to have the White House uh, security, the, uh, would the Secret Service be told by the president, don't let these people in? Uh I mean, it's just this. these judges think, oh, okay, well, you know, we're not going to get involved. No, you need to be involved because normally, you know, what would happen in a situation like this should be, you know, these judges should rule, no, Congress has the authority to, you know, demand someone to testify, and you have to testify. And, and then in that case, you know, like in that case, if the judges – did get what they should have, say, okay, uh, this person has to testify. Then Trump, you know, President Trump would say, no, I told Congress, fuck you, this person is not testifying, period. Then it would be up to the judicial system to issue, you know, a judgment saying, no. Mr. President, or whoever, you know, you know, might be the Department of, I don't know, but whoever, you know, then it would be up to the judges to issue an order saying, no, you are ordered by the, you know, the judicial system. Here is the order. You will allow this person to testify. If you do not, action will be taken against you. And then, you know, then... That would not be a good situation either. We just, you know, nothing is going to, even if Trump is, even if Trump is reelected, we can't make, even if he's not reelected, well, we, there's, we need to make some changes to our system of government. We, we found some stuff out. Uh, now, of course, all the Trump supporters are going to say, oh, you're just trying to, cancel the election or you're trying to take away his lawful authority you know whatever changes we make aren't going to happen you know in the next year and even if trump is reelected 
changes to that would have to be taken to the Constitution are not, you know, they have to be approved by the House, the Senate, by I think two thirds or three, whatever it is, in order for a Constitution. Then it has to go to what three fourths of the states to be approved by their local by the uh, state legis, you know. So, but what we what we see now, you know, our founding fathers never thought we would have somebody like a Donald Trump. So now we know. So now we need to look at this and study it, you know, and that's where Congress comes in. Have hearings. Of course, you have to hope that the executive branch is going to cooperate. Uh, you know, send you the information and have people, experts, testify before you. And then, what changes should we make? And I don't know what. You know, that's something that right now we're all worried about the economy and the uh, this virus and other things. But I think we, it would be good for us to get together and, you know, that and both sides, Democrats and Republicans, and say what should we do? Should we do away with the electoral college? Now that would be a hard one to get past because the Republicans got two presidents elected, who did not, you know, Bush and Trump, who did not get the most votes. The Democrat got the most votes, but they got the election and fair and square because that's the way it works because they got electoral college votes. And so I can see the Republicans forever are going to just think that this is a thing to make sure that they don't win again or something. So it can be very difficult to get the get that change. And maybe I'm not sure maybe we shouldn't change that system. Maybe it should be improved some way. And I'm not sure exactly. Maybe all the electoral votes in a state should go to the person who gets the most votes, or maybe and it varies from state to state. Or maybe it should be divided up. However, they you know I don't know. That should be studied. That probably already has been studied. So there's the electoral college, which is not the biggest thing. Uh, gerrymandering, you know, dividing up the the states decide voting districts. And Republican, Democrats and Republicans both have done this in the past, but the Republicans have just pushed it to the extreme, you know. The Democrats would make, uh, okay, let's say, let's get this little area over in here because we have working class people in there, and that way, you know, we'll, uh, there'll be more of them together and they can get uh, somebody elected, you know. But the Republicans have just gone crazy, you know. Little looks like a snake or something running around taking in the uh, people that have money or, or locking out the people that are putting all the people that are black into so they only get one person elected where if you made it more equal, you know. So th that should be something that uh, should be worked on and figured out because it's it's insulting and it's so stu it makes us look ridiculous, you know. So the gerrymandering of districts should be something worked on. Um, now, because of Trump politically using the Department of Justice, which pretty much I think is unheard of the way he's, you know, done that, and the people that he's appointed and used, I don't know. Maybe I don't know. This and I, I this is something that needs to be studied there again, and need to have hearings and experts from every area need to come into. Maybe the Department of Justice should be underneath the uh, Supreme Court or whatever, underneath the court. Maybe that should be, maybe that's a totally wrong way to do it, though. Maybe that's the, uh, I don't know. You know, if we just, if like in this case, if the Republicans like in the Senate, if they had not allowed Trump to pick the terrible people that he did for, uh, you know, that have to be approved, you know, uh, Department of Justice and all this type of stuff, but they'll, they'll vote for anybody as they did for like uh, DeVos or whatever, head of the Department of Education. 
oh my God, so incompetent. And others, so I don't know what you can do. I mean, that's people electing. They've, our, our Constitution in the beginning, uh, senators in the Constitution, senators were not elected the way they're elected now by the people in a state voting for two, two of them. The state legislatures picked, you know, the two senators. And that's the way it was originally decided. But that worked out terrible because you have states, you know, and you have, you know, like you, so let's say you have California, a giant state, you know, and you have New York state or whatever. And you probably still would have a problem. But you, all the other states that are smaller, you can have, one guy that's a publisher in the state, uh, see Mr. Smith goes to Washington movie, for an example, maybe. Um, or you have a state that has, you know, somebody that's rich in there or whatever, and it turns out that, you know, well, they could pick the senators, you know. So you get, so this, it was an improvement the way they went with, you know, people in the states voting for the two senators. And I'm not, that doesn't need to be changed in any way. Uh, that I can think of. Anyway, what we need to do, oh, I know, too, the, that's something that needs to be, and I think the American people, maybe both sides, actually might go, I mean, right now, it's Trump supporters are like, you're not going to take away his power, you're not going to stop this great man from doing everything, you know, whatever, so we might have to wait till he's out, but uh, the, and it's, you know, in our Constitution that, you know, the president can pardon for, you know, any federal thing. I mean, if somebody murders somebody, that's not, you know, he can't pardon somebody on a state charge or other state charges. But uh, maybe we should, it's too bad, you know, that that it has to, you have to go in and change the Constitution over it. But, uh, there again, you need to get together and you need to have hearings and people need to come from, you know, from uh, the judicial system and from the executive and and get together and look at things and come up. They would probably have already done that sometime in the past, but they, unfortunately now, where you, we see that these uh, pardon thing, and, you know, it's kind of like, I think, too, like tradition that, you know, the king could pardon people so we have a government you know like hey we you know we got our freedom from the british so our president also he can he can pardon people but maybe now we need to uh say that number one that the president of the united states you know cannot pardon himself i think even our courts if it even the supreme court even with a court packed with uh, some people, you know, packed by some Republicans and with uh, Trump putting in a couple of his people or whatever. I think even the Supreme Court would, if it came down to can the president pardon himself, I think they would say no because that just goes against the very idea of justice and uh, whatever. So I think they would say no. But what we need is, it is you know, we need it, I guess, spelled out that the president cannot pardon himself and I guess not pardoned. Uh, and we, you know, we had a president. Uh, Nixon was pardoned by Ford, and that was, a, I think that was the correct thing. Our country, you know, Nixon resigned, and the country was divided in a way. I mean, everybody, well, not everybody, but Republicans also. In fact, Republicans went to, you know, his supporters, you know, from Congress, from the Senate or whatever, went to the president and said, you know, Mr. President, you need to resign. We, are, we will, you know, we'll vote with the Democrats and remove you. So Trump, so uh, Nixon resigned. But, and then Ford pardoned him. And I thought that was, Ford took tremendous, Ford was his vice president. Uh, president Ford, I, I thought, conducted himself properly. And he's, by stopping any uh, charges against the president, 
Nixon. Uh, he saved the nation from having. We might have. We might still have. Be, we might still be having. Yeah, court cases about that. I mean, so he he put it into that, and then that was over. You know, okay, it's over. Uh, but I think that something should be done with the thing of pardon. Well, you know, one, of course, the president can't pardon himself, and I guess the president shouldn't be able to pardon the vice president. I'm not sure. You know, all this would ha you'd have to have hearings and decide the thing. But then I think even for the other cases, okay, then for uh, cases where, you know, and you, where you want the president to be able to look and say, hey, this is an injustice. You know, this person getting life in prison for possession of marijuana or whatever this, you know, whatever the situation is. But then there should be spelled out something that the president doesn't have the, the soul ability, you know, that it has to, has to be uh, checked in some way. You know, if somebody, they have to submit a request for, or maybe you should allow it that they don't have to, you know, be normally 99% or whatever say, you know, but, uh, but anyway, so people request, you know, that they be pardoned or commuted or whatever the, you know, uh, not pardoned, but they could be just let out, uh, whatever the terminology are, you know, is for all these various things. But maybe that it should have to be, they have to request it, and then it has to go before some group, before it gets to the president. Now that's where you'd come in, you know, uh, is. Are you going to take it before the Justice Department? Well, those are the people who pr may be prosecuted. The, I'm not, you know, would it go before them? Then, or would it go before some judges? Uh, I, I, I don't know. That all that would, there's where, again, you want to have the executive branch and the legislative branch working together and the legislative branch able to call in people and have them testify and ask them of their opinion and what do you think and then you drop some type of a procedure where uh, some situation like what, what we currently have is that you know the president like Trump would not be able to of course it's going to not going to be applying to him it's going to be after <laughs> he's long gone but something like this in the future is isn't going to happen you're not going to have somebody like the president pardoning somebody like Stone, you know, or whatever. The w worst person probably you should, you should never get a, you know, an arrogant bastard who, you know, basically gave his finger to the judge on several occasions. The judge told him and his staff and, the, of course, the prosecution and everybody else, do not talk to the press about this. Do not talk to anybody about this. This is confidential. And... He goes right outside uh, on the steps of the courthouse and, uh, you know, talks about it and, and, you know, gives the finger to the judge. And uh, now he's been found guilty and he hasn't been sentenced yet, I don't believe. And uh, he's, re he's saying the judge was unfair to him and he wants a new judge. <laughs> I mean, he's just an arrogant, you know, SOB, so... You need to have some type of procedure. I'm guessing that other White Houses that there was, you know, that the president, maybe some president did say, okay, well, it was this old drinking buddy that I was roommates with in college, and, and he got, you know, 25 years for possession of a joint, and I'm just going to pardon him because I'm, this is my last day, and I'm leaving, you know, though I'm, my last day on the, you know, a new president's taken over. That might have happened occasionally throughout history, but nothing like, you know, nothing like Trump's administration. So you need something. And they probably in the past had, uh, every presidency probably had a procedure. So, you know, people, a person requested, goes before they, somebody, maybe somebody, a White House staffer reviews it, talks to people. Then it goes to the next stage, and then they 
asked the Justice Department, we're considering what do you think? Give us your, you know, the Justice Department can't, you know, can't stop it. What, what do you think of these? So forth and so on. So anyway, we need some changes to the system. We know that now because, of course, in the past, we, you could look at things and say, okay, this, you know, we could use a trip. Now, from this, this is, let's correct the system now before, you know. And, of course, the Republicans, you know, his hardcore supporters are going to yell and scream, you're trying to put Hillary Clinton in office and say that Trump wasn't a valid president and and that uh, going to, you know, you could do this. I mean, they're just, you know. Looney Tunes, but what they should realize is, okay, a Democrat gets elected, you know, gets elected, you know, president. So then, you know, he can say, uh, no, I'm not going to, you know, then you have Congress, you know, say you have Congress, say you have both houses of Congress, you know, Republican and, uh, the Democrat, you know, in the in the White House. Well, President Trump said "fuck Congress," so I say "fuck Congress." Uh, you know, the legislature underneath uh, Trump, you know, allocated money for such and such, and uh, Trump wanted money for his wall, and they wouldn't give it to him. So uh, he just declared a a national emergency with an executive order, and took money from the military and from the CDC and from uh, other, you know, organizations and that, you know, and just use that money so I can do the same thing, you know. So we need to f make, try to make our system work better because it's getting really bad and really scary. So anyway. Oh, I didn't look at the... Uh, Oh, and here's a case, you know, apparently everybody says this John Ratcliffe is going to be director of the National Intelligence thing. After 9-11, we saw that FBI and CIA and these, they weren't working together the way they should. And we knew, because of 9-11, we needed to fix it. So we set up something, you know, uh, and... So whatever this guy is, director of national intelligence, I think that that's the position. They created a bunch of, made a bunch of changes to improve things. And I think that's the one that was created so that the CIA reports to him, the FBI reports to him, the National Security Agency, the, I think that's the one that monitors all the communications in the world and other things. Everybody reports to him, and then he reports to the president and I guess to Congress too, you know reports to those people and he makes sure that all of the information coming in you know not just the what from just not just from the CIA but all of it comes in and it's all presented to the you know laid out for the president and uh, what and so we have a guy here who's Trump is going to appoint to that position never you know he has no experience at all in that area he's just somebody who is going to be like Vice President Pence and look at Trump with adoring and loving eyes and is going to be a yes man for whatever the president says. And he's not going to bring anything to the, you know, if the president says that there's a deep state conspiracy against him and he's not going to be bringing anything to, you know. So, my God. I guess that's another area. The president should be able to, you know, the president should, yes, be able to pick someone. I want this person as, you know, the uh, head of the uh, education department or the head of uh, the state department or the head of the uh, justice department and then be approved by the Senate, all that type of stuff. I, I guess there's no way, though, we can get the Senate to senators to actually at least not in the case with the senate under you know trump we should have senators that are saying you know hey whatever it is let's say well let's say vote i'm a loyal democrat I'm, or somebody else will be i'm a loyal republican and no matter whether the president is democrat or republican 
uh, I have to make sure that this person who is being approved is the correct person to head the, you know, the education department or the agricultural department or whatever it is. We can't depend on that, so I don't know what in the hell, you know, I don't, I don't know how we can fix the situation. Health news, oh no. It just so happens, by the way, that I've had here at the house for a long time, my ex-wife thinks totally unnecessary, but I've had gloves and mask here for a long time. Uh, before she moved in, I also had water stockpiled and stuff, and then she moved in, and, and I would fill up two-liter Coke bottles, you know, empty Coke bottles with water. I had them stacked up and all that. And one, she doesn't want to spend money on anything, uh, which, and I, and I like to spend money. But of course, all these things, just using water was the only expense, you know. But uh, I, uh, you know, I did have a fire extinguisher. I didn't have an axe, I never got around to getting an axe and so, but I wanted to be prepared sort of like the Mormons are, but not as much. I think they, I think part of their religion, is, I think they're supposed to have like a year's worth of stuff. And I, I like that. I, I'm not a prepper. I'm not worried about, well, I mean, disasters can happen. I'm not, but I'm not one of the preppers that, you know, but I do think that it's a good idea for everybody to be prepared, to have your medicines, to have your, have a stockpile of food so you can last a while have fire extinguisher, have, you know, that kind of stuff. But Anyway, thank you very much for watching. God, how am I going to make an index for this? You know what I mean? Uh, tags or whatever. I sure as hell don't want to listen to myself talking for all this time. So anyway, thank you very much.